All right, so we've got our lines laid out. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so we've got our lines laid out on the top. We've got my fence set to this keep dimension. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut like this, and I'm going to stop before it's time to come up for the slope of that scallop, that little curve. Um, so I'm going to go really slow. It's going to leave it a little thicker than I need, which is perfect. I need it to be a little thicker. I'll take care of the final shape, sanding and whatnot. out of the way and move this a little bit, move my zero clearance box plate here so we can lop these off. I'll bring you back in just a second. Okay, so now I'm set up to lop these corners off. You'll see where they are. So I'm just going to take a diagonal cut across here to knock this little wedge of this little bit of extra material out of the way. I'll just do that very carefully without touching my heap zones. I'm not trying to make this radius, but if I get there close, I don't mind. It's less I'll have to sand. And I'm just going real slow. Now that part is free, and I can just call that good. Oop, or slice right into it. Damn it. Damn it. Okay, well, you might as well see what I did that I screwed up that caused me to cuss a second ago. While I was trying to show the camera, I dinged my front leading edge with the blade. This is my square. This is the strings are going to go that way. So I dinged that, but I didn't ding it very deep, and I made a lot of cussing noises, but now that I've assessed it, I didn't ding it very deep. I'm going to round this over anyways. I'm pretty sure I can get rid of that. Just got to be more careful. That's all it comes down to. Just got to watch what I'm doing a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this little bit off, and then we'll move on. So get the saw going again one more time. I'm going to try not to be so in informative, so I'm sorry about that. But it just made me kind of hurt. hurt myself. There you go. It's free. Now, I could try to save myself a little bit of cutting here by easing towards that line, but it's okay where it is. Yeah, we're all right with what I've got. All right, so there's that. I'm going to I'm gonna lay out for this curve somehow. That's the next bit, and then I'll, I'll work on it from there. So I'll bring you back in just a second. All right, so I'm going to lay out the heel shape. I've decided I'll just cut it on the I think it'll be all right to cut it on the rear end of it, on the rear side. So what I'm doing is transferring the vital lines. This is this line, the center line, and this line, <clears throat> which is kind of where I wanted the main curve to stop. <clears throat> and I said about an inch and an eighth for the, uh, for the final width here at that point. So I'm going to go with that just set my square here double check that it's where I think it should land it does okay and I'm just gonna make a couple of parallel marks across or little cross marks here so I know where to end this little mist mist okay and then it just so happens 
this curve fits just about where I want it to on that particular layout. So I'm just going to use this curve, which is my saddle for the neck, my neck saddle, neck cradle. And no, I'm not going super precise here. I am doing this a bit by eye because I think precision will make it less uh, appealing. So we're about a sixteenth shy from that edge. Now I want to come out and I think I want to kick up a sixteenth or so maybe on this side. So I'm going to do another mark. Yeah, that should, pre, should be pretty symmetrical. I'm going to do another mark that's an inch and... Um, I don't think an eighth is a good idea. I think we'll do an inch and three sixteenths for that. We'll just go up a sixteenth, or a lot more than a sixteenth there. There. And then we'll call that the final end length here and there, get there okay, we'll do the same on this end like so and then I can I need to come from here actually I'll go to that point and that point Okay. And then I need to come up from there. And I am just going to freehand this because it's a very slight curve. A very slight curve. And then I'll, I'll blend those together. So that's kind of what we're after here. Something in that sort of shape. And then I'll... I'll play around with that on the drum sander a bit and get a bit more symmetrical. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's where we are now. Um, so I'm going to go over back to the bandsaw. I'm going to try to cut this out vertically. Hopefully I don't get a bunch of tear out. Really hope I don't get a bunch of tear out on this area. Should be okay because it's going to be along the grain, so it should be all right. Um, but back to the bandsaw we go and rough cut this out. All right, so here we go. Hopefully I don't get too much tear out. I'm going to go really slowly and I'm going to stay well off my line. It's cutting really fast because it's so thin. spindle sander in. I think it's a two inch. It's my biggest one I've got. I don't have the three inch one. I kind of wish I did, but for now, two inch will be fine. It'll actually fit this radius decently. Um, so now I'm just going to clean up this curved, these two curved curves here and make things nice and pretty. So I don't know how loud this will be, so we'll just see what, what it takes. So I'm just going to go after it here. 
spindle sander I think <laughs> I don't use it very often at all um, okay so now I'm gonna put this on a board and get it so I can shape finish shaping these bits and get a curve in the top and round over this and round over back here a little bit and just do the final bits of shaping um, but this gets the kind of the rough finished shape so the rough outline this is my profile is done I'll use a little bit of sandpaper to smooth these transitions just a tiny bit more but basically that's it all right off to the parrot vise we go. Alright, so now we're ready to kind of do some finesse filing and shaping work on the bridge bit. The, the bridge, but I need to hold it a decent way. I need to hold it so I have access to kind of most of the shapes, most of the side, most of the edges, most of the... I need to hold it so that I can access almost all of it. So I can't just grab it in a vise as easy. I just have to end up moving it around. So if I can hold it flat, that'll work really well. So I've got here just a scrap of MDF. I'm going to mark out, might as well just mark one end here. So what I'm going to do is cut a platform out of MDF that is pretty close to the shape of this bridge. And I have a feeling, I should have answered this before, but I imagine some people wonder why I'm not doing this on the CNC. Because I don't want to. <laughs> um, I'll explain more here in just a bit. Uh, but here we're gonna cut. Uh, we're gonna cut this out real quick. I'll be right back. Magic of television. My hand will be in the same position, but it'll be the right shape. Hold on. Et voilà, is done with the cuttings. Woo! I don't know what the hell I'm on. All right, I'm gonna mount this. I'll show you here in just a second. Uh, actually, this is fine. I'll just come back with this. Um, I'm gonna stick a bit of vertical MDF to this. I'll cut this off. So I have some place to grab it. I can grab it in the parrot vise and hold on to the thing. So let me let me cut this off real quick. Let's see how long we need it. Somewhere in that area, and I'll just go cut real quick. Watch one, two, three. Presto, chinjo, slice. And now we have that. Okay, that part's good. I'm just gonna real quickly glue this on, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so we've got our little platform here, which is about the shape of our bridge plate. Got a bit of double stick tape on the back. I'm just gonna stick it to this little platform, which will allow me to do all sorts of stuff to every single angle, including fix that little ding that I made there. So I've got various uh, tools and choices. I've got some 80 grit sandpaper on a piece of maple. I think that's maple, no, that's walnut. Walnut sap, which is what that is. And I can do that. And I got coarser, finer grits as well, 220 and 150. Got some 150 on a, I think this is like a, somewhere in the little over, th almost a 3 8 dowel. Or, uh, it's a transfer punch, it's a piece of steel. But this fits this radius, smaller than this radius that I was after. And so I can come in here and take care of that, smooth things out. I'm going to grab files, rasps, whatever I got to do to get this thing basically as perfect as I can. Um, before I do that, I'm going to mark the holes for the pins, and I'm going to mark roughly where I want the saddle to live. I'll end up finessing that a little bit um, when I get to that point. But I'm going to basically just mark a couple of spots so that I, I don't want to redo this layout if I can help it. But if I have to, I can. Um, the idea is 
get this thing shaped as much as I can. Basically ready to go on the guitar before I actually drill for the, I uh, might do the pinholes after it's uh, glued on. I haven't decided. No, I want the pinholes so I can locate it. So I'll probably drill the pinholes now so that they are there. <clears throat> I think. I think that's the way I'll do it. I'll do the pinholes now here so that when they go on I can drill them. Yeah, that's probably wise. So I'll get all the perfect uh, positioning, per perfection of positioning. So I'll just drill them and then I'll ream them when it's on. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Thinking through process, it's always what I do. So I think we're just going to go after getting this thing shaped. And I'm going to put on some music because it's, this is going to be a lot of just tedium, um, standard stuff, just using fine files, small files to get in here, round files to get this radius good, keep this flat, um, I'll round over the leading edge, I'll probably do a little rounding of the back edge, I'll round all of this sort of kind of pillowing it, but I want to keep this, my hope is to keep this crisp as I can, as crisp as possible, because it's kind of a cool little shadow line. It's kind of how Martin does it too. Um, so yeah, we're going to go after this um, and get things going. So I'll bring you back when I'm ready to go there. So I've done the scallop shaping nicely. I like that. At the the thin spots are thin. Like I like them, and this is good crisp curves. I want to put a radius in the top of this, but before I do, I want to drill for the pinholes, uh, the peg holes. But I made a mistake laying this out last time, the other day, the other morning. Um, the problem is, I put them. Uh, I'm, I'm aligning the pinholes, the pegs diagonal which is in a, in a diagonal fashion that is parallel to the saddle. But what I did was I located the pinholes perpendicular to the saddle, which would be putting the, the strings at an angle, but they're not going to come in at an angle. They're still coming in straight. So what I need to do is come at the string location on the saddle where I had planned, but square, not perpendicular to the saddle itself. So what I want to do is uh, just briefly remove the... Boy, that's going to be weird. I'll briefly remove the um, the marks I made already. You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the marks that are here for the strings. So there's there's that one there. There's that one there. And then there's one here, one here, one there, and one there. So I'm going to take those and I'm just going to I'm just going to mark the pin. I'm just going to punch where they go. So that one's an easy one. That one just goes after I get all the schmutz off of the thing. So that one is this line right here, I believe. Yeah, right there. Okay, so there's one. That's the sixth string. That's the bass string, the lowest string. There's two. Here's the fifth string, right? there yeah that's good okay instead of instead of square to the saddle they're square to the string or square to the parallel with the center line is what it is as always the center line is king here okay this one we can do right there yeah that's a lot smarter locating right there i think because otherwise your string has to make a bend there to hit those peg holes. And we don't want that. So I'm just marking with an awl here. Let's make sure we're on the line. Double check our lines. Um, I don't like where that one is. Let's see if I can mush some stuff over there. Try to move that line just so that's beautiful. That'll work. That one's a little bit forward as well, so see if I can't move that one down just a tiny bit. There we are. There we go, right there. Looks good. And that'll cover getting them aligned. Good, okay. Now, 
I was going to do this with just an eighth inch bit, but I'm going to start with a small one because I want to be able to move it around a little bit if I have to. Um, sometimes you can sort of reposition a line or a, a, the starting of a hole sometimes if it's a small enough one. So I'm just going to come in here with my sixteenth inch bit, and I want to I want to tilt my I want to tilt back so that they're going towards the neck a little bit. They lean a little bit away from they lean towards the heel basically. Um, so that when the strings come in, they resist the, the push just a bit. Yeah. I'm not going to really be precise about what that angle is. Just a little bit of an angle is all. So. There. The hole started, then tilt it back just a tiny bit. It might be five or six degrees. It's not much. Okay, do the same for this one. So while I've got you guys listening to me here, I thought I would address a thought that I suspect some of you might... Oop, I broke the bit. Damn it! Let's think about one thing at a time. Yeah, <laughs> press to change up the bits. Gold now. Um, so I wanted to address what some of you might be wondering is why I don't build this bridge with my CNC. And the main reason is because I want to practice this. I want to do this by hand a few times before I even try CNCing stuff because I find that what a lot of things are missing in CNC is you lose a lot of the uh, the craft isn't the right word the technique you if you do it with CNC you don't get as much of a feel for what works with the wood itself because as far as the CNC is concerned it's just material and there's also I mean that's a practical reasoning for me it's also just because I kind of want to you know I just want to do it that way. So I've got these in here at 16th, 16th inch diameter holes. I'm going to do them in eighths because I actually have eighth inch pins that I use and I can use them to locate the bridge to the body later. And I think um, Hoffman does them in 3 sixteenths, but uh, I'm going to start with eighth. Oof, that is an aggressive cut. Okay, so this is a good thing I'm doing this now because I'm going to try to run this backwards here real quick and see if I can't burnish a little before it, uh, no, it really just tears into it. Okay, well, I might, uh, I might go file some flats onto this thing so it scrapes a little bit because right now it's really aggressive and it's tearing out my rosewood. So I'm going to take a quick little deliberate dulling action here. I've got a, I'll just use the, one of the files here, one of these, these little diamond hones. And I'm just going to put a couple of little flats onto the leading edge. So it's not quite so rambunctious. Yeah, I'm just trying to, it's technically dulling, but it's just leaving a little bit less of a grabby edge. So it should hopefully be a little less um, obnoxious with the wood. So we'll see. Let's try now. Yeah, it's a little better. It's still pretty damn aggressive, but we'll work with this. I'm going to put it on the low and just let it do it. And this is just an aggressive bit, it seems. I'll take it easy here. Yeah, it's just making all sorts of racket. Trying to dive in. 
This rosewood is really hard though too, so it's not helping. I'm trying to, what I'm doing is trying to keep the weight of the drill off it so that it doesn't help it dig in up at the top. I'm trying to avoid tear out on top. It's not a huge problem because these are all going to get reamed and those holes are going to get bigger, but I want to make sure that I don't go crazy or don't let it go crazy. Okay, so those are my holes for my string pins. Now what I want to do is I want to crown this. I want to curve the top of this a bit. Did I cover the whole CNC thing enough? I just want to do this because I like to do it by hand. And it's helping me understand better what goes into the bridge, the efforts involved. It's also helping me decide how I want make, how my bridges will be. When I start making bridges of my own sort of design, I want to do them a few times by hand before I start getting um, into CNCing because it's really only worth CNCing when you're going to do a bunch. It's not usually worth doing one unless it's really difficult, and these are not that difficult. And most of it is just, I kind of just want to do this. This is, this is fun for me, so I kind of want to do this. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the reasoning. Um, now, what I'm going to do for the radius of this, I don't actually have any other radius gauges except I have the headstock shape template. And this curve makes a drop of about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe slightly more. So I'm going to use that as my guide to bring these down, to bring this down to that radius. So this is going to get whatever this curve is. That's my plan anyway. Um, we'll see if that actually works out to my desired output. We'll see. But I figured just to give it a little radius and then I can pillow things a little bit more. Um, so back to the music. I've got more sanding to do. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to sand one side, sand the other, do a lot of this checking stuff and get it as close as I can to it and try to keep it fairly parallel and whatnot. So, all right, more beautiful music. Okay, so we got it uh, sanded to 220 all around, we contoured the back edge, or the front edge, sorry, that's the, the string side, the neck side, this is the back edge, I guess, the heel. Um, and I think we're pretty happy with this. I'm going to, I am done shaping, so we'll pry it off with the double stick tape. And, uh, we'll fix, uh, fix these holes up a little bit, a little clogged, there we go. And uh, I think we're pretty good with my bridge. I'm going to call that uh, shaped. Yeah, that'll work out well, I think. I think that's just fine. Not bad at all. Yeah, so the only things left then, now that I've got the bridge shaped, is we want to, I think I want to get it radius for the, for the top for the body so that the so that it seats perfectly on the body um, I'm gonna have to cut the saddle slot but I think I'm gonna do that after it's glued in um, yeah so we're gonna go get to this contoured to the body shape that's our next step I think mm -hmm. 